Um, this morning, before I get into my message on Mark 4, I just want to take a second and talk about what it looks like to be a prophetic community. So in Ezekiel 13, God speaks to the, the prophets of Israel. In verses 3, 4, and 5, he says, Woe to you, O foolish prophets. He calls out the prophetic community in Israel, and he says, you failed to see the gap or the division or the breach in the walls around the city, and because you failed to stand in that gap and bring healing into that gap, the nation of Israel is failing to stand in the day of war. And I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but he calls out the prophetic community because he said, you should have been concerned for healing. You should have been concerned for bringing healing to the division that you see. That term for breach or gap literally means the outburst of a river whose banks have been broken open, and it can talk about the emotional outburst of anger or wrath. And, and looking today, I mean, I, I, like, like many of you, I'm sure, I've just been grieved watching the news cycle, and it almost feels overwhelming looking through any kind of social media feed or any kind of, uh, any kind of news. It's just overwhelming, but we're looking as a church, as a, as a body of believers, our responsibility is to see the places that need healing and bring the Father's heart. Christianity is the one answer across the whole world to bring healing to divide and division. And the Father calls it out. Woe to you, foolish prophets, for failing to see that place that needs healing. And I'm saying right now, as a Christian, as a, as a disciple of Christ, there's division and gaps among us that the Father longs to pour his heart and his love into. And I think for far too long, we've missed the mark. For far too long, we've missed his heart. For far too long, we've missed his love. And he's calling us to be, he's always called us to be a people of love. He's always called us to be a people concerned about his love, care, compassion, and tenderness. And that's where we stand today. I, I stand today grieved grieved watching what's happening across the world. When it comes to all these things, all these things that edge out the impact of the statements God would make towards you, the revelation of his heart, and the revelation of his tenderness, the only thing that convicts you is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit produces godly sorrow that leads to repentance, that leads to lasting change. Presently, in our day and age, right now, people are telling you to feel guilty because you're a particular ethnicity. The Holy Spirit doesn't convict you because of who you are. The Holy Spirit convicts you because of who you are not. He doesn't convict you based on everything about you. He convicts you based on actions that you have taken and says, this is not okay. He doesn't convict you for being a skin color. He doesn't convict you for being black or white or brown or red or whatever. He doesn't convict you for being uh, American, Canadian, Indian, Chinese. He doesn't convict you for any of those things. He convicts you because of actions that you have taken that have denigrated other people. He deals in specifics. The enemy deals in generalities. You are this way. That is bad. See, right now we live in an age where you're supposed to feel guilt and, you, and, and that guilt is just some, actually, the whole idea of feeling guilty for who you are leaves a non-entity to change you. It's just this vague sense of feeling bad about yourself. The, the Father is actually, I think the Father is speaking to the church today, saying there are issues of injustice happening right now. There are people whose families have been broken and abandoned. James doesn't say pure and undefiled religion is this, to feel bad about yourself, but he says to take care of the widows and the orphans, to go into the very place where her people are and say, let me pour my life out on behalf of you. 
So we've got this vague sense that I'm supposed to be feel guilty for who I am, but God is calling us to be a loving, compassionate, kind, and caring people, carrying his heart into the very divide where, where society is right now, and to speak love and compassion into those places. The Holy Spirit convicts you to be better than you are. 